Alright, so this is a video showing a little bit about cleaning a Tascam Porta 2. So say you've bought one of these. These are awesome little portable 4-track cassette recorders. And people are using them these days to play infinite tape loops through, which I'll be doing another video showing you how to make um, varying lengths of infinite tapes. I see a lot of people selling them for like 20 bucks a piece or 10 bucks a piece, but they're really actually very easy to make, so um, I'll do a really clear video how to make that. Uh, I've been successful in making 10 second and uh, 5 second ones, so I'll uh, be showing that. But this is just a short video showing you, say like you've gone on uh, eBay or Reverb.com and you've bought uh, a Tascam Porta 2 and you get it and the microphone um, jack or one of these volume jacks has a lot of popping, clicking noises happening. Uh, what happens is these um, these are potentiometers. They're just basically like a variable resistor, and um, they're very common in, in uh, tape players and various other devices. You know, volume knobs. Uh, um, you know, uh, 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 uh. what happens is they get like dirt or dust or something inside of the potentiometer, and then when you turn this, it'll make really loud pops in your uh, ears. So. You can buy these things really cheap, actually, and people who sell these sometimes, you know, they sell them cheap because they say, oh, it pops and crackles, and they think it's like a problem and it's hard to fix. It's actually really not hard to fix at all. As you, I'll be doing videos on more complicated uh, tape decks um, in the future, um, but it's really smart to get into practice of um, when you're taking these things apart, you know, build yourself some, um, just, you know, get, you know, get some little small Ziploc bags. Don't build them. Uh, and then just you know label them so that when you're taking all the bolts and screws off that you basically have a place where you can remember where they go. You might even want to do it for the knobs. Um, it's easy for me to remember that the you know the color where they go. But uh, as you get into more complicated ones, you you may want to basically label and know where to put your knobs. You don't want to lose any of this stuff. So let's just get started. Uh, one of the ways that I also when I do this is I I clean these things. Um, once I get them, and you can, you maybe can tell in the video that there's a bunch of dirt and crust here. Um, you can use various things like rubbing alcohol um, to clean with, but you want to be really careful on anything rubber or plastic with rubbing alcohol because it could dry it out and cause it to crack, especially on the rubber parts. Um, I'll provide a link where I bought this, but there's a place called VintageElectronics.net, and like I bought this rubber cleaner and restorer, which is actually really great for in here the little um, capistan rollers and stuff like that they're made of rubber and I would never use rubbing alcohol on those um, you'll just end up making them sticky and tacky and uh, it'll deteriorate the rubber really fast um, but I found that the rub rubbing alcohol can work for the outside hard plastic but if you have it I mean that's great but also you can just use a little bit of um, dish soap diluted and some q-tips so um, I'll just take these oftentimes and uh, you know just get in there and clean this stuff out. Um, uh, it's a little bit easier once you take all this stuff apart and I'll show you that here in a second but as you can see these things they get really dirty and this is the same dirt that gets basically underneath these potentiometers and gets stuck inside there um, and causes the popping and crackling. So yeah let's get started. Um, so these these come off really easy these knobs you just kind of sometimes they're stuck on there pretty well you just got to kind of <laughs> pull them off I, bought, I just bought this thing these come off really easy most of these knobs come off really easy like that sometimes they can be a little bit of a pain um, yeah there we go These are actually a little more on there than I've ever seen, so um, so yeah, don't be worried if they're a little hard to get off. Um, you're not going to damage anything. And these you can leave on. Uh, everything here is good. So. Also, sometimes it's good to have something padded and soft down if you're just going to leave the knobs on to remove the bottom here because um, you don't want it like really putting too much pressure, but uh, yeah. So there's just a few screws on this thing. Maybe 
there's only three screws. So again, it may seem like something simple like this that you can keep track of, of, of your screws and whatnot, but um, I would highly recommend just, you know, just label your stuff. Uh, yeah, that way you, um, you know where it is. So to take this thing off, um, it, it's pretty easy. It's, it's sort of latched right here and then it's sort of snapped on right here. So one good way to do it is to um, so grip right here and right here and sort of lift this up as you can see and it starts to pop off and then same thing here and then you just you can see there's little indentations right here so I'm just grabbing here and then I'm grabbing this piece and I'm just pulling it sort of off So when this thing comes apart, you're going to have a couple of connections here. Um, so you can just open it up like this. And I would recommend if this is your first time doing it, um, take, take a photo of where these connect. I think it's pretty obvious, but you may want to just take a photo um, because in order to get to the belts, which I'll be showing eventually, you're going to have to take this piece off. So you'll want to have another baggie that has, um, you know, proper, you know, uh, labeling, so you know where all those screws go. And then later in another video, when I show how to start adding variable um, pitch speed adjusters and stuff like that, um, you're going to want to also be able to label because when you take these motors out and replace them, it's nice to know what screws go where. Same thing as with here. You know, I'll have like a little. Um, a little circuit board marked for all the screws that go here because this is where we're going to access the, um, the potentiometer and also sometimes you'll get a jack that's actually busted um, and you can replace those as well you can go on eBay and you can buy spare jacks and it's really easy to replace it's just a simple solder job not very hard at all um, okay so as far as these are concerned um, they, they come up pretty easy um, just kind of wiggle them back and forth here. Boom, comes right off. You just want to be careful that you don't yank out one of the wires or something. So don't, don't definitely don't pull on these wires to try to get it out. You can kind of grab um, sort of underneath here on each side. You can sort of get your fingernails under there and, and pull it out. You can even sort of grab it like that, but just be careful, you don't want to pull the wires. You, you want to grip the actual plastic and not pull on the wires. Because if you pull those out, it's going to be a real pain to, um, to fix. There you go. So now that this is separated, uh, we're not going to be dealing with this part right now. Um, but uh, you can clean this if you're going to clean this thing, this, this is actually, I'm really, this is the first time I've opened this one up. This is actually really nice and clean in here. Sometimes these can be really filthy depending on the type of use that they got. Um, but again, like I said, vintageelectronics.net, um, they have a rubber cleaner and restore, which is really good for the little Capistan rollers right here. Um, and that's actually what, by the way, uh, when you make the tape loops, um, a, lot, a lot of mistakes that people make, and I made this in the beginning too, is you make the tape too tight, um, thinking that these actually turn the tape, but they really don't. What turns the tape is this pinch roller, when you press play, it pushes against the capistan, and then this will mechanically roll the tape through. So you actually want the tape, if you're making an infinite tape loop, to be slightly um, loose, to have a little bit of slack. It'll, it'll work much better that way. So with this rubber restore, you can you can basically get in here and sort of like uh, clean the um, the rubber here, and it pulls a little bit of the grime off. But definitely don't use uh, like I said, do not use um, rubbing alcohol on this little rubber piece. It'll screw it up real bad. And this one was pretty dirty. It's probably got like you know a lot of. Um, old tape residue and stuff on it. So this will 
uh, help it play better. The other thing is, um, don't breathe this stuff too much. You're crazy. You're crazy, man. You're crazy. You definitely, um, head cleaner is really strong, so please use it in a well-ventilated well area. You will get a little high off of it if you're not careful. To do a look high? Yeah. Definitely, um, don't recommend just breathing it. Um, always try to like get a little bit off, replace the caps. So you're not breathing too many fumes. And then the this is the playhead, and this is the record head. Um, another thing, if you're making infant tape loops, is sometimes you're going to cover up the tape head with a uh, record head with a little bit of masking tape, and that will uh, help prevent having little gaps in your tape. Um, so you can have an infinite loop. But you just want to kind of clean these a little bit with the head cleaner. Like, like so. Alright, so I'm going to put this aside. This will, uh, In another video I'm going to show how to replace the motor with a variable speed motor. I'm going to show how to replace all these um, uh, um, belts. Um, these when you buy these things, a lot of times um, they'll be warbly, and you may want that, but it could be so warbly that the tape will actually just stop and not really work. These belts, over time, if they just sit in one position for like a year or two, they'll actually get warped. And when you take these off, you'll see that they won't have like a round look. They'll actually be like pinched on the ends because over time they get dried out and messed up, and then they make like a whoop, 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 whoop sort of sound in the tape. And that's desirable for certain things, but they can get so bad that they just don't work. So this one has a problem with that. I got this thing really cheap on eBay. So I'm gonna replace the belts in the next video. Okay. Now this is the part that uh, we're looking for to uh, clean out the potentiometer. And what you're gonna need to do is you're gonna need to uh, undo this screw This might be a case where the uh, precision screwdriver is too, yeah, too small. So yeah, just unscrew this. And then I have one labeled here for a circuit board. So I'm just gonna put these in here. Um, this is a grounding right here. This is important. Make sure that you remember where this is grounded at. There's also, I believe, a grounding under here. Uh, this is um, something just to keep in mind, the position of all the screws. Hopefully some of this isn't off camera. I apologize if it is. Uh, this is the first video for YouTube. Um, but anyway, you can see I've taken the screws off. Just remember this goes here. Um, and we'll take this one off as well. And then because there's little uh, jacks in here, headphone jacks, it pulls, you know, lift up and then sort of pull back. And you should be able to Pull it right out like that. Boom. So here's the, uh, the whole assembly. As I said, sometimes these headphone jacks themselves will actually be bad. I've had one in a case where the whole thing was cracked. Um, so all you have to do is just uh, make sure you to get a stereo one. They have like three prongs, as you can see here. And you just desolder those, uh, clean it up real well, and then um, and then. Uh, you know, solder in a new one. You can buy them on eBay pretty cheap. I don't know if you can see in the video, but uh, oftentimes, I'll use a little rubbing alcohol here. 
Oftentimes these things will come like this. This is from the factory. This isn't, uh, I don't know if you can see it in the video, but it's got a ton of old uh, flux, which is a rosin that's used in the soldering process. And if you really want to have this thing super clean and nice, you can just kind of like run um, some rubbing alcohol over the circuit board. And you can see that color right there. That's the color of a rosin flux. That, that happens as a product of them um, soldering in everything. Rosin helps uh, the lead um, solder flow a little bit better. I'm gonna do a video on like proper soldering techniques as well. Um, so that, you know, look, look for that in the next few videos. Uh, but yeah, so if you wanna clean these things really nicely, I always try to like uh, go over these. I, I will with this one, um, but I, I did, this is how I go over it. I use like rubbing alcohol in this part and clean the whole circuit board really nice. It's not exactly necessary, but it's just nice to have it clean. It doesn't gather a lot of junk that way. Um, so that's really nice. But anyway, the meat and potatoes of this, is this is the potentiometer that adjusts the headphone volume and we want to make sure that this is clean. You could either replace this, um, but I would prefer to just clean it. So on Amazon, I bought this stuff. It's called Detox It D5. Uh, <laughs> look at that, improves electronic components. Um, but what this does is basically we'll get in there into the potentiometer and it will take any, um, it's sort of like a WD-40 for electronics. It'll take any dust out of there and you know, clean it up really nicely. Um, some potentiometers, they have um, they have like a little hole where you can actually get into easier and uh, spray this stuff in there more effectively to get in there. These are really sealed potentiometers, so they're a lot harder to get into. I find that if I run this a little slowly along the shaft and then down into here it tend and then work it, it you know by turning it back and forth it tends to work really nicely into the um, uh, into the potentiometer and get really any dust out of there so this one was crackling really bad like it'll hurt your ears like really bad it doesn't matter if the volume is low or not because when you're turning the volume knob if you have the headphones on it will pop so loud in your ear it's really bad um, this one was almost unworkable but I guarantee after this, most of the pops will be gone. If you do this a couple of times or just wait, you know, use it a few times, it'll, it'll work itself in there and eventually it'll, it'll eat up all the dust and it'll be like a brand new potentiometer. All right. So let's do this uh, job really quick. Um, this stuff can be a little messy, so I'm just going to go ahead and put something down. Um, shake this a little bit. And uh, what I like to do, uh, just because it can, it can spray around a bit, so I try to, and I know you don't want to get it all over the damn circuit board and stuff. I mean, it, it's going to dry, so that's fine, but I, I try to just kind of like, yeah, I just don't want it all over the place. Um, so I just kind of uh, slowly spray it in here. Oh yeah, uh, one thing while I'm doing this, so you can see I'm just slightly spraying it down in there and letting it get inside the motor, or <laughs> the potentiometer, not the motor. Um, one thing I want to mention is that you want to wear eye protection whenever you're doing this kind of stuff. If this stuff sprays in your eye, it's going to be a, a nasty thing. And likewise, in the future when I'm showing soldering videos, please wear eye protection because solder pops and crackles and it will get in your eye, I know from experience. Um, I, I used to uh, fix radars for a living and uh, in the Marine Corps and I had to work on a lot of electronics and I was not wearing my eye protection one day and solder popped and it literally went in my eye and I had to go have uh, some simple surgery to get it removed out of my cornea. So first hand experience, it's not worth losing your eye over or have, I didn't lose my eye luckily, but I, it could have been a lot worse. So hot solder in the eye or, you know, this shit in your eye, accidents happen, just be careful. Okay, so as you can see, I'm trying to spray the, the, the material down in between this plastic um, arm and the metal sheath. There's a little gap where uh, you can get the stuff in there and then I'm twisting it to work it back and forth. And just try to get all that good stuff in there. Yeah. 
and I'm just barely pressing down on this thing because it will shoot out if you press too hard. Okay. You don't have to do these other ones. These are just the, um, the volume pots for the, for the uh, individual tracks, the four tracks. But you know what? I'm going to do it while I'm here because they, they didn't seem to have a problem. But this stuff is great. It'll make it like brand new. Um, and yeah, it's made a mess. It's gotten all over the board. So I'm just going to try to clean some of that up, get, get some of that off. Like I said, it will, um, it will dry sort of like WD-40 does. And it will um, not really leave much of a stain. But I mean, these things are already spinning much better now that they've got some of that uh, detox it down in there. So that's awesome. Ain't nobody got time for that. Now let's put this back together. These you slide back into here first. Kind of put it in at an angle. Remember the uh, grounding wire there. With this particular model, this little thing will be a trick to sort of get in there at the same time. So just be aware of that uh, if it's having a little bit of trouble going in. So I'm just trying to get that, there we go, lined up properly. There we go, see, that was a little trick. That little guy right there uh, will be tricky to get back in there. So. I got this put back in. Just remember that the screws on the back of this are, um, they have a slightly smaller thread size than the ones for the um, circuit board. So I put them all in the same bag. What an idiot! Um, the same circuit board bag, but that I built for myself. But it might be smart to just keep these ones separate so you remember. If, if it's having trouble going in there like I was having, then it's, you just got the wrong one and um, I hope this is all in frame and as you can see these are very easy to snap in they go in one way hopefully you remember or you've taken a photo so you know where they go it's very clear that the long ones are these ones here um, Again, you know, be careful not to pull on these wires or push on them too much. You don't, you know, you don't want this coming loose. Uh, push with the plastic and you know, snap right back in there. Everything's connected nicely. And then, like I said, this sort of is a lip that you can probably see right here. There's a little, uh, little latch that kind of needs to get stuck underneath there and then there it all snaps back together then we have our screws for the bottom
Alright, so I went ahead and recorded another video where I'm going to show you how to replace the belts in this because this one had bad belts. It's all fixed now. It's completely cleaned. Um, I want to show how the potentiometer is uh, working. Um, I've connected a jack to um, uh, my little recorder and so we can hear how the headphone jacks are working. Hopefully they're not crackling too much. You're probably hearing just a little bit. But that's because I think I need to probably just do one more round of running um, some cleaner in there. But before it was crackling so loud it would blow your eardrums out. It was really bad. So this is actually a big dramatic improvement. And besides, most times you'll be running this out to your mixer, um, not from the headphones. So this is just the headphones potentiometer and that was the one that was bad and it seems to be fixed now. But if we press play on an endless loop tape that I've made here. Um, we can start to turn this up and make sure everything's working. crackling. I can't hear it myself right now, but I'm hoping that's good. And uh, in a future video, I'm going to show how to make this endless loop tape, and then I'll be posting the video of replacing the belts as well. And uh, yeah, please like and subscribe if you want to see more videos like this. I'll be posting music as well as modifications that I make to keyboards, um, cassette players. Uh, I'm going to show how to build oscillators. But um, yeah, give me a thumbs up, like I said. If you like the video, um, give me a thumbs down if uh, you thought something could be improved and please leave a comment in this section below and let me know what I can do to improve this video. Okay, bye.